strategic move that Eddie is making for AJ. Why are you not thinking, let's get him set up for kind of animal? Um, if, if that was years and years and years ago. Like, Clarissa is a way different fighter from when she was back in the Thanks for those joining me live and to those that will be joining me on our defenses that she's had to have recently. You know, she's cool people. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of The Ground Tape about tribalism. Uh, I don't think tribalism is necessarily bad. I just don't think it has to be. I don't know what he think he sees or what he money. think he know. Wow. But he going to the hospital, bro. Like, bro, you not wow. winning that fight. You guys mentioned, I think, Adisal, you mentioned him versus Regis Cobra. I love that. sounds like a oh, I don't need you. You know, and PBC and others, in my opinion, it's like, oh, this is my, my guy. Flat out, and he's tough, and we, we call box, and we, we go to the end of the round, and then that was all. What do you mean by acting black? That's a fair question, but a participant of trash talk knows. And they're announcing a the fight three, four months from now, and he ain't gonna fight. I bet you anything, he's not gonna fight somebody as good as John Wayne. And thanks to those showing us live. Those have joined us on the archive. These style here being shown by the one and the only Joe Habib from Ringside Reporter. Check out the roundtable next week on his channel every Thursday. And of course, we have Gail joining us from nyfights.com. Make sure you go to the website, check out our content, all that good stuff. A lot of great stuff over there. Um, a lot to talk about. We'll have some more panelists join us uh, while the show uh, proceeds. Um, a lot to talk about here, so I actually want to start with a, a early preview of fights. It's not going to happen until June, all right? And this is Juan Francisco Estrada, or Gallo Estrada, as I like to call him, against Jesse Bam Rodriguez. It's official for June 29th. It's going to be in Phoenix, okay? Uh, the tickets have already gone on sale, actually, in case anybody's interested. Go to your Ticketmaster, StubHub, whatever, all right? This is a classic old lion versus young lion matchup. And we're going to early preview it here. Um, this is one of those fights where even though the top dog of the division is respected and considered pound for pound by some people and everything, there seems to be like this kind of feeling that it's like a foregone conclusion that the young lion is going to take over the pride. Gail, what do you think of this matchup, and, and what's your feeling, you know, as we look at the forecast of this fight? Well, I'm a big fan of the smaller weight divisions, always have been, and of these two guys in particular. And, you know, it took some guts on both their parts to agree to this fight. You know, mm -hmm. Bam is the guy on the rise, still got an undefeated record, you know, a little bit to lose, a little hit to his reputation and his trajectory if he loses to the great Grand Campion. On the other hand, Estrada, you know, he, you know, risks uh, a difficult loss to a rising star and, you know, gets his crown knocked aside a little bit, his reputation. A lot of questions at this point of his career, which is, you know, a guaranteed Hall of Fame career at this point. He didn't need to take this risk, but damn it, he did it. Damn it, Bam did it. This is what we want in boxing. This is what fans ask for over and over. And the guys in the smaller weight divisions and the women, they get it on. We got two more getting it on. And if you are anywhere within driving, flying distance, get your ass to Arizona, you need to go this fight. That arena needs to be filled for this fight. It is absolutely a passing of the torch one way or the other. Okay. Babe, will this be a situation? Is he going to take the young guy to school or, or is the young lion going to, going to take over here? No, Jesse Rodriguez has so much momentum and he's, and he's been getting better with every fight and he hasn't even peaked yet. He hasn't even entered his prime yet i don't think he or just beginning his prime i should say and he's gonna be there for a couple more years most certainly um estrada definitely has that that workhorse mentality that resume he's he's, he's just been a a stalwart of, of the lower weight divisions and um you gotta give him his respect and you gotta also give him his respect for taking this fight because a lot of times when you know you're in a position like his, you don't want to pass the torch. You don't you don't want to risk 
you know, being beat by the young guy, right? You want you want to go out on your, you know, on, on a high note when you when you exit, right? So I like Estrada. I really like Bam, but I, I, I think this is just a timing thing. You got one guy going up and you have one guy who's kind of edging down a little bit in Estrada. And um, I think it could be a, a pretty definitive win for Bam. But I'd like to be wrong. I'd love to be wrong and, and, and have this fight be more competitive than I think it will be. But we'll see. We'll see. But it's definitely um, a good name for Rodriguez to have on his resume, right? And, again, it is a passing of the torch. And got to give him Estrada credit for taking on this challenge because he really doesn't have to. Yeah, he, he the, doesn't have to. I mean, that, that that's, uh, that's unfortunate. That's like a language we use now as fans. Um when we say things like that, like, oh, he doesn't have to take the fight. And he's taking it. I think I want a sport where these guys have to take these fights, right? I mean, like, like they, they don't do this in any other sport. Like, oh, LeBron, he, he don't have to uh, face the best basketball players in the world if he doesn't want to. Well, if he, if he wants to play in the NBA, yes, he does. Um, but but I'm glad that, that Estrada is, is taking this fight. I think – I don't even know what – I'm not even sure what the odds are, but, but, but I'll tell you this um, – it won't shock me if they're like three to one, four to one odds uh, in favor of Bam. It just wouldn't shock me. But what I don't want people to do is after Bam wins, which I believe he will, is don't take away from his win because the odd, odd makers had it wide. The odd makers are not going to have it wide because Estrada ain't shit. No, no, they're, they're going to have it wide. Excuse my language. Uh, but they're going to have it wide because Bam is a special fighter, in my opinion. Calix, how's it going? Good, man. It's good to be. Back on the round table. It's been a while. Life's been getting in the way, but good to be back. Hey, glad to have you back for sure. Um, we're, we're just doing a quick, you know, an early preview. Pass it to the torch. Possibly, right? Uh, I know how you feel about it, but what, how are you feeling about this fight? Like, how, how would you like, if somebody asked you, let, let me put it this way. If, if one of your casual friends was like, asked you about this fight, how would you describe this fight? What story would you give them? On the lead up to this fight, old lion versus new lion, old legend versus um, up and coming, pound for pound, possibly special talent. That's how I would, and guarantee fireworks as well, being the way that they fight, right? Because they keep their hands free. Um, unfortunately, we saw a guy fight over the past weekend uh, that doesn't like to keep his hands free. And that seems to be the norm with a lot of American fighters, but we have a, Mar a young American fighter here in Bram Rodriguez who does like to keep his hands free and does fight with that um, higher level of difficulty and keeping the hands free. And, you know, your prototypical uh, boxer counter puncher who can also punch. Uh, so this is, this is high stakes. It's Gallo trying to stay, uh, stay the guy, the lion, um and trying to get back on pound for pound lists and add to his legacy that it's a high stakes fight for both guys well i'm gonna tell you guys what i hope happens I, and and i love bam i think bam and i'm expecting him to win that's what i'm expecting that's what my brain's telling me right and if he wins he wins i'll still be happy for him but, but what i'm hoping my heart's telling me I want Guy Ostrada to take him to school. I want him to prove all the doubters wrong. I want him to I, I just I want I want him to have that moment where he's like, What's up, Eric? You didn't believe me or what? And, I, and I'll eat my crow. I'll be I like, thought you were I thought you were a band fan. What is, what is I, this? I am, but 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 Guy Ostrada's like I'm I'm a huge fan of Guy Ostrada. And, and I think uh, if Estrada wins this fight, my God, would that be a legacy what is win? This? We're not letting you back on the band. He'll have that bandwagon. Moment. You remember when he's a contrarian. He's a contrarian, Calix. That's what he likes. <laughs> Do you? No, 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 not at all. The Bam wagon. Did I hear you right? The Bam wagon. No, no. But, but do you remember when Hopkins like stared down the media because he was a big yeah. underdog in his like, and he just stuck there and he had his moment? Like I, I want Gallo to have that moment. I do because Bam's gonna be okay, right? Bam can win the rematch. Or he has a long career ahead of him. He'll be fine. But for Gallo to have that moment, and, and I, one more question about this uh, to the panel. If Gallo Strada wins this fight, right? I've asked this to Calix before. And I'll come full circle back to him. But 
Gail, if, if Guy Estrada wins this fight, does he have an argument over Canelo as the best Mexican fighter of this generation? No, 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 no. <laughs> he does not. He he has been challenged and pushed too many times. Uh, he has the loss to Chocolatito, who appeared in the news this morning, uh, to our surprise, announcing a fight, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, and as much as I love, and I think we, I speak for all of you, as much as this panel loves and admires the men and women in the smaller weight divisions, they they really don't have the gravity of the divisions that Canelo is trafficked in. Um, and you've got some other guys who could make a case. You know, Chavez Sr. is still there and quite a few other Mexican fighters. Uh, I would never pick. Well, I don't mean all time. I just mean like this generation, I like this. In recent, no, last I mean years. this generation. I mean, really, yeah. What are these stipulations for? Yeah. Well, I um, see that uh, the, best, the best Mexican fighter under, you know, 120 pounds. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could slice it a million ways. I, I don't need think we need to rank them against each other why can't we just enjoy all you can't do that, you can't do that. <laughs> i know oh my god boxing, boxing fans <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but short answer is no but that does not take away from his accomplishments uh the excellent fights he's had over the years and again when he shows up on my hall of fame ballot check done yeah. So, Beeb, I saw you shake your head. True or false? If 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 Guy Estrada beats Bam Rodriguez, he will have a win as a bigger underdog than Canelo ever was in his career. Canelo's okay. never been an underdog like that. He's never been counted out completely like that and won a fight. Okay, that that's not a way. Like, I mean, what's up? With, what's up? With, I mean, what's, he's the best Mexican fighter that has a last name ending in A. I mean, we're coming up with all these. <laughs> Stipulations, please. Well, we're going. We're, we're, we're creating stipulations. Please. We should finish WrestleMania. It's about stipulations, final bosses, and everything. You know what I mean? No, I, I, I see where you're going with it. Um, you know what? I guess maybe you're 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 kind of st stating that these lighter weight divisions need to get more shine, and it, it maybe because he's in a lighter weight division, um, people w wouldn't consider that. Maybe they should consider that. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think that's sure. the, that's the direction you're going in, and I get it. I get what you're saying, but um, it is what it is. I mean, perception is reality, so I guess we got to live with that. Yeah, hundred percent perception is real. Calix, I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. No, I, I think it. I think it's a discussion if he wins because he's the old lion that adds to his legacy by beating Bam. He's a three to one underdog from what I'm seeing. So they're giving Gallo credit. I mean, they're, they're giving him credit. That's not as wide as I thought it was going to be. Um, he beat Sorong Vise, right? The first fight was, uh, could have went either way. Mm. Uh, and then he has a trilogy victory against Chocolatito, who, in my opinion, best lower weight class fighter of this era. And he's got that as well so he's attached himself to another legendary fighter in chocolatito so other wins like valoria he's got he's got wins to back it up now canelo i think has it throughout more weight classes right it's three weight classes for gallo estrada but a lot of title fights just like canelo it's a discussion i i, I wouldn't completely rule it out these thoughts it's a discussion if he goes in there and somehow defeats bam it, it's it's now a discussion yeah this is this is where I think Canelo has separated himself from Gallo, though the past four or five years is 2020 to 2024. Canelo has fought twice as many times than Gallo Estrada. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the fights that Gallo Estrada has fought, yes, he did end up getting the victory, the, the ultimate victory against Chocolatito, and that's meaningful. But the first victory, I thought the fight against Argy, Argy Cortez was was very questionable. Him getting that decision, I thought that was very w's very w's, questionable. You know what I mean? like, and I think the house fighter won that fight to get him to the Chocolatito fight. That's what I what I thought. So I just think don't think his body of work has been strong the past four years. That, that's just okay. my opinion, and I think he's going to get dog walked. To be honest, I mean, we asked Paul Malnagi. He doesn't think Canelo won any of his close fights. So, like, like <laughs> no. you know, I'm just saying. 
But um, look, so since it's us four right now, and I know this wasn't in, in the uh, in the topics, um, just, just to, to, since we brought up Canelo, and, and obviously polly has been in the news, and, and um, uh, Polly's still uh, basically, you know, going at Canelo, and it's, I want you guys like overall thoughts here. How are you feeling about? Um, if it is, is, do you think Canelo is gonna like how are you feeling right now about Canelo potentially fighting David? Do you feel it's likely gonna happen? Are you losing faith in a fight happening in September or at any point later in the year? Uh, how are you feeling about it, Gail? Uh, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about it. How's that for an answer? I change my mind every damn day, every time there's a new rumor or a new comment, uh. Stuff that goes on. I mean, the truth is that we have to ask from Canelo's point of view, does he need Benavides? Does he need him? We want it. We would love to see it. I guarantee it'd be a fun fight to watch. Hmm. Does he need it for his legacy? In the end, no. With that, not having that fight keep him from the Hall of Fame, no. Um, is it enough money? Is the risk worth the reward? Is that the fight he wants to end his career on? And I would say no. As much as I hate the thought, we'll never see it. From his point of view, I get it if the answer is no, depending on how this fight goes with Mungia whether they, God forbid, dangle Berlanga in front of him, or I suppose that's possible. We'll see what happens. Um, but Canelo can walk off into the sunset with his money and go join the Live Golf Tour. Mark my words, he's going to go golf somewhere for money. And, you know, the memory of the disappointment of this fight not happening will fade. I hope that doesn't come to pass, but I wouldn't be surprised. Does, does Canelo need him? Man, um, I think a lot of us, like well, just to speak for myself, like I feel like I need the fight. So so maybe I'm projecting on Canelo like he needs it, but but he really doesn't. But uh, I know I want I want the fight. I feel like I need it, but I think you're right. I don't I don't really despite what people are saying, oh look, you're justifying the duck like i don't think anybody talked about justifying anything um more so than just pointing out does he really like the same way benavides feels that he doesn't need because everyone does it right like he doesn't need uh morale well that's kind of just doing the same thing to him like you know i don't, well, I don't need you either right so so like it, there's always some type of finger pointing going around calyx do you feel confident or less confident right now that we're going to get that fight later this year? Uh, I, I don't have a good feel on it at all right now, to be honest. There's just too much from both sides, too much talk, too much posturing. So I don't, I don't really, I don't have a good feeling about it. Um, I, I've always said, I've been, you, you've heard me say this for about a year now, right? That I've always felt that's a September 2024 fight. Um, and I hope that's mm. the case. I hope it's been that case, but we found out what do we, what was the big revelation is he wasn't in the, um, Benavidez wasn't in a three fight deal for PBC. So it wasn't going to be a September, 2024 fight, but I hope the boxing gods work their magic and it ends up being a September to November, 2024 fight, because to me, there's, there's real, no, really no justification as to why it's, it, it can't be. Um, I would agree that Canelo doesn't need anybody. I would agree with that, but if I'm hearing him correctly and he's going to stick around from three to five, three to five more years, I don't, I don't, I don't like the, this thing we hear from Canelo super fans and I'm a Canelo fan and I'm also a Bud fan, but I feel like people are starting to flank me um, to the extreme side and say things. I hear Bud fans say it like, I don't need Tim. We don't need Tim zoo. We don't need boots in us. It's like, if you're going to stick around and you're going to fight, why not fight the fights that that's that's the type of energy that i like so to me not needing him doesn't justify not fighting the fight but we also have to lay some of the blame on the other side there's a lot of double triple quadruple talking around each other on the other side it's just way too confusing from the benavidez side and that's making things um 
is clouding the waters even more. I would like for the Benavidez side to be a little more clear and concise. We know they want Canelo, but what are you going to do to get the fight? Um, I don't want to hear 55 million, 80 million. Yeah, he deserves 200 million. Just, just clear and concise one voice on that side and make this easier for people to follow. Because right now I just, D -style, I, I, I have no idea. I don't know. Joe, you were confident the last time we talked about this on the round table. How, how, how are you feeling right now about a Benavides fight later this year? 99.9% .9 sure it's done in September, without a doubt. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. Um, Buy your plane tickets, everybody. Samson sometimes does exaggerate and stretch the truth at times, right? But sometimes he does reveal things and – even when he's trying to not reveal things, he reveals things, right? Let's things out of the bag. And if you notice, they don't have they don't they haven't they don't have a date. They have a proposed date, but they don't they don't have an official date and they don't have an official venue for that Vosdick fight. That's number one. And when I spoke with Samson, he said, uh, uh, if after that fight, May fifth, Canelo says that he wants to fight David, we will. We will cancel that Vosdick fight. We'll pull out of that Vosdick. We won't. We won't. We'll go through that Vosdick fight. And he also said two weeks after the Munguia fight, if Canelo says he'll take us on in September, then we'll pull out of the Vosdick fight. We'll scrap that fight. So I think Vosdick is just kind of the, you know, the backup plan for David if Canelo doesn't. But I kind of think all this stuff that's going on right now is just all smoke and mirrors. I think behind the scenes, I do think that PBC and Canelo and even David, I think everybody is kind of being told, yeah, we're going to push this off till September and this is going to be their crescendo. And when you talk about these multi-fight deals, they, they get kind of tricky because when, when you're, when you're signing with, with PBC and you know, you, you're negotiating for yourself. You can't, you know, the other the other fighters that are proposed that you that could be proposed opponents or potential opponents, I should say, for you, they, they're going to have their own contract. So it's like you can't sign a deal for yourself with the expectation that these guys are already on board because these guys got to navigate their own careers. Anything can happen. So was like when people say David wasn't in the deal, I mean, Again, you know, all, every fight has to be negotiated. Every fight has two, two, two contracts. So there's always moving parts in these deals. It's not none of these deals are etched in stone, right? Because you got different parties, you know, to put the fight together. It's not you can't you can't um, you know just say I'm going to fight this guy if this guy hasn't signed a contract to fight you. He has to agree to the money. Everything has, everything's got to be right. So I, I do think this fight is going to happen, and you got to think of the broadcaster too. You know, they didn't want Canelo versus um, Charlo, right? PBC didn't want it. The broad, apparently, the broadcaster didn't want it, right? So, you know, will someone pick up Berlanga? Like, will Canelo? Will, will the Zone be able to pay Canelo right enough money to fight Berlanga? No, they, they, you know, they Canelo went and talked to the Zone for the Munguia fight. And PBC put up more money, right? They had more money, so he went with them. So I do think that there's going to be a lot of money put on the table for this September fight for Canelo, and I think he will accept it. And I think all this other stuff is just kind of part of this, part of the plan, part of the script. And um, it's just trying to. I think both sides are just trying to build the fight up. And I think everyone knows behind the scenes what's going on. And this is going to be a September fight. I'm very confident it happens in September. All right. Hey, Ezra, how's it going, brother? Very good. Sorry for being late. It's all good. Things happen. Hey, um, just an impromptu kind of topic. I just want to ask you before we proceed. Um, how are you feeling right now? This day, um, you know, April 11th, 2024. How are you feeling about Canelo Benavides happening later this year? Are you optimistic, pessimistic? How are you feeling about it? I'm I'm really on both sides of it. Like you know what I mean. Like I, some days I'm like it only makes sense that it's the last it's the last one of their deal, right? It's the third fight. It makes sense that that's the fight, right? That one makes the most money. The ball's 100 percent in Canelo's court. It's in no one else's court but Canelo. I mean that's just 100 percent the truth. If he wants this fight, snap his fingers, it's gonna happen. 
And Benavides has done the worst job of uh, negotiating ever. But I guess he has to do that, right? He's got to say, I'll take uh, change. I'll take a little bit of change that you're willing to give me. I'll do the rehydration clause. I I'm ready when he is, on whatever notice. He's done everything before they even got to the negotiation table to say, I'm going to give you whatever you want in this contract. But that's just what he has to do to make this fight. I don't know what's going to happen. I hope it is. But the ball is 100% Canelo's court. It's 100%. Right. Well, I think everybody could agree with that. It's it's if Canelo wants to fight, we could definitely make it happen. But um, I think I, I'm optimistic that it happens later this year. If it doesn't, then we'll address that. All right. So let, let's get this started with Richardson Hitchens. Did he get a gift decision against Gustavo Lemos? Uh, how did you see the fight? And you know. Uh, how do you feel about Hitch? Because this was an eliminator. Hitchens chance against Subriel Matias. Let's start with you, Raw. Um, I think that uh, I, I I thought I scored it a draw. I thought it could have went either way with a round, right? I thought it could have went either way. The part that's a robbery is that one guy had it very very wide for Hitchens, and I don't think anyone saw that fight. I, and I, honestly, if Hitchens is honest with himself, I don't think he saw that fight. The, mm -hmm. the fight was. You know, he has an issue. He had an issue with the pace, right? The fight was really determined on Lemos' legs. When Lemos had legs and he could put the pressure on him, he was doing very, very well, and Hitchens was really struggling, right? But when he couldn't and the distance was kept, then Hitchens would have his way with the fight. It was really not determined on what Hitchens did. It was determined on what Lemos was able to do cardio-wise. I think that it was a robbery because that one judge was way off. What I see for Hitchens is I'm not as down as a lot of people are on him because if he fights a certain style, it's pretty good. If you could take him out of that style, that's where it gets shaky. That's for a lot of fighters. If you get anyone out of their style, a lot of times it gets shaky for them. Will he do good against uh, Matias? Probably not. That's probably the style that's going to be a, a really hard time for him. Would you get to a good against a guy like Progress? I think he would. I think he would do a good against a guy like Progress, who isn't exactly 100% output like that, isn't exactly uh, um, bum-rushing you like that. He's not that kind of fighter. So there are guys that are high-level that he could do, do good against. A guy like Matias is probably just a, a, a horrible matchup for him. Okay. Joe, how did you see the fight? What you considered a, a robbery or gift decision? And um, how do you see his chances against Matias after watching this fight? I added a draw as well, um, and I gave the first round to Hitchens. A lot of people I, I heard gave the first round to Lamos. So if they give it to Lamos, then you know I could see it 115, 113 for Lamos. I, I, I think Hitchens was a bit fortunate. I'm not going to say it was a robbery, but I think he was a bit fortunate to get the decision. Um, I felt like I gave him a, the benefit of the doubt, and even with doing that, I, I, the most I came up with was a draw. Was it impossible to score at seven five for him? No, not at all. I think the big difference here, though, is I know I know people are looking at this fight and they're saying, "Oh, well, Matias is going to destroy Hitchens now." But here, here's the thing: like, like Lamos has very quick feet, and he's in this hot. He moves his head very well when he's when he's um, coming forward, and he makes himself a very compact target, and he 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 pivots well. He throws combinations and pivots very quickly and 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 very well off the combinations. He's not gonna. He doesn't stand right in front of you, right? Where where Matias isn't the quickest guy on his feet. He's right there, right? Sometimes he squares up. Obviously, he's he's got the power, so you got to be aware of that. But quite honestly, as crazy as this may sound, not a lot of us didn't didn't know uh, Lamos going into this fight, but now we do. And just based off of styles, I actually think Matias is a better style matchup for Hitchens than, than Lemos was, right? Because he's not as compact, he's not as elusive, and he's not as quick. And he, and he, and he doesn't um, bring the volume as well that, that Lemos brings. So I do think the Matias fight is a tough fight for Hitchens, but it is it is winnable. If he fights, um, you know, a very, very um, – Methodical fight, you know, and, and, if, and if he is just very alert and aware and, and he's very defensive minded, which it may, it may not be the most aesthetically pleasing fight. Right. I, I don't I, I think he can't make this fight exciting. Right. I, I do think Lamos' speed and his activity and pressure forced forced this fight to be exciting. But like I said, if Matias can't close the gap 
which I don't believe he he he'll be able to do so as effectively as Lamos did, then you know I I, I think Hitchens can stink to join out and he could he got a decision against Matias. It's not impossible, but it's it's still a tall task, but it's not impossible. All right, Gail, how did you score this fight? And after this, does it influence how you think he'll do against Matias? A draw would have been fair. I frankly would have done what the referee failed to do and penalize Hitchens for some of that clinching in a few of the close rounds, which would have probably swung the scorecards to Lemos. Um, it's a shame that his aggression didn't get rewarded. Robbery is a little bit of a strong word. It, it was close, and a lot of those rounds were very difficult to score. But I would be one of those judges who would reward the aggression and the attempt every time. Having said that, I unfortunately agree we're going to see more of the same against Matias because Hitchens, after the fight, was completely defiant and in denial about his performance. He thought he did a masterful job. It was a great fight. He was the clear winner. Now, maybe that is blowing smoke at all of us who were watching, but I don't think so. I truly believe that he truly believed what he was saying, which tells me he is going to learn very little from this fight. He's going to continue to do exactly what he did because it preserves his record. And to him, that appears to be the most important thing. He's not one of those guys that is willing to go for broke, bro, balls to the wall, to fight, to entertain, to uphold his honor in the ring, like some of the gentlemen we were talking about earlier in this show. Nope, we're going to see Hitchens clinching part Two. The only thing that might help is if Eddie Hearn and Matchroom and Matias's team insist on a referee who isn't going to let that stuff go in the same way we saw in, in the Lemos fight. And, you know, fingers crossed, but I, I don't think that I'm going to be ready in the front row with my popcorn for that, unfortunately. And... <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to get more of the same. Calix, you, you, you kind of know what's up. What are your thoughts on the fight, and uh, how do you see a Matias fight with Hitchens going if, if that happens? I had a 116-112 Lemos, but um, draw is fine. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to dispute a draw. It's, uh, that's fine. Like Gail said, this wasn't the biggest uh, robbery of all time, nothing like that. So I, I feel a draw is fine. Uh, I just rewarded the uh, more the, the fighter who went in and, and the story coming in was Ken Lemos speed Hitchens up and this fight was fought at his pace and I didn't feel like Lemos got the credit for that. Another thing Lemos didn't cre get credit for on the scorecards I felt like is we all know CompuBox isn't perfect, but we all have eyes and I think it tells the story of what we saw. It, it aligns with that. And what we saw was a guy in Lemos who threw all, over uh, twice the amount of power punches as Hitchens. And he landed at a re close to the amount of close to the percentage that Hitchens landed as far as power punches, even though he threw more than twice as many, he landed twice as many power punches. So I just have to start asking the question, are we watching professional boxing or what? We all, we all want to see dudes like he's forcing the fight. The fight's being fought at his pace, which makes him the ring general and he's landing twice as many meaningful shots. Now, we knew coming in, Hitchens is a jab and holder, right? And Gail just talked about it. Like, none of us, I'm not going to pretend like I'm going to stay at home on a Saturday night and watch this guy fight, right? He's a guy, we used to call these fighters DVR fighters, right? We'll, we'll just catch it on Sunday morning. We'll, we'll get around. That's that's the type of fighter Richardson Hitchens is, and that's the tough part that Matchroom is going to have to deal with is they're going to have to uh, make this guy interesting some kind of way. And like Gail said, maybe they bring in a referee that's going to speed him up, right? I don't know. But some kind of way they're going to have to make this guy entertaining um, or they're going to have to fight him a lot, get him a belt, fight him a lot, get him a lot of title defenses because right now nobody's emotionally invested in him. But I just didn't, I didn't see 
a pathway to Richardson Hitchens winning this fight by jabbing and holding, jabbing and holding. We were talking about Bam Rodriguez earlier. Um, he fights more of that prototypical throwback boxer type of fight, right? The guy who stands in front of you with his hands free, counter punches, not breaking up the action, breaking up the action and putting everybody to sleep. Richardson Hitchens is fighting more of that new style boxer um, type of fight, right? To where it's jab, hold, 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 break up the action. And I, I just don't like seeing that get rewarded. I don't, I don't know. So I didn't, I didn't see him winning the fight. I thought Lemos won the fight. I thought he was a better fighter on Saturday night. This is a true story. When I worked at Dish, uh, they were developing a competing DVR to DirecTV, and they called it a PVR. And I remember saying, that's stupid. What does that stand for? Personal video recorder. No, I'll call it DVR. <laughs> okay, well, what are we doing? PVR. But anyway, I feel old hearing DVR. I never thought, I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> hey, uh, Dave... Talk to us. Um, how did you see that Hitchens fight with Lemos from Argentina, by the way? And um, do, do you like Hitchens' uh, chances? I think I said that right. Hitchens' chances against uh, Matias. No, oh, no, I don't. You know, I was more excited last week. Uh, I was saying I'm looking for that next Marcos Maidana, the next Lucas Matisse out of Argentina. And I was impressed by Lemos. You know, I thought he should have gotten the nod. Seven to five is how I scored it. And, you know, thinking about what Gail had pointed out, the excessive holding and clinching, you know, a different referee, if he wasn't the house fighter, may have rewarded uh, Lemos and, and given that uh, deducted a point away from him, even making the scorecard even more wide in my in my favor of for Lemos. Um, I think this past Saturday, we could have clearly have seen somebody on the caliber of Pitbull Cruz stopping Hitchens. You know, and possibly Lemos, Lemos puts himself in the mix of someone I want to see again. I want to see that guy fight. I don't want to see Hitchens fight. He does get a title shot against um, the Puerto Rican star, the Puerto Rican champion. I think he's going to get stopped in that fight. Mm -hmm. I think the, there's there's no way his, his tactics are going to hold up against somebody uh, like the Puerto Rican star. I think he's getting stopped in that fight. I just don't think he's... Uh, uh, with that talent pull at 140 being so heavy, I don't see him mixing it up and, and getting a title um, amongst this group right now. I don't think he beats Teofimo Lopez. Right. Uh, obviously, I don't think he beats the Puerto Rican champion. And I don't think I've uh, seen what, what Lemos was able to accomplish with his similar size stature uh, and uh, fighting, fighting style. I don't think he beats Pitbull Cruz either. Okay, man. That's that's not even Pitbull Cruz. Well, why do you say it that way? What's wrong with Pitbull Cruz? I I think Pitbull Cruz is a phenomenal fighter. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I'm very impressed <laughs> with what Pitbull Cruz has been able to do, carrying his with with but, his but, physical but, dimensions to come up the 140. I am not. Hey, more power to Pitbull. He's got a growing. He got a big, it, Dave, Dave, don't even say anything slightly critical about. But, but Pitbull why Cruz do people word it that way? Stuff. Like like oh, even even Pitbull Cruz would beat him. Like, what does that even mean? Like what's? It's like Say, oh, even these style will, will even beat you at a game. No, I didn't say Riley would beat him. <laughs> you know? But uh let, well look, what I'll say is this. Um it's just, just my opinion. Nobody has to agree with what I have to say. Um I don't have a big issue with boxing scoring criteria. I don't. I understand the scoring criteria, I understand you know, rank generalship and clean punches and defense, effective aggressiveness. I understand all that, but what I don't like is how the sport doesn't emphasize the aggression. Uh, it's like, if you're aggressive, well, it better be effective. But they never like really emphasize the defense, though. right? They never say, well, if you're going to be defensive and make them miss, well, make them pay too. Or there's really nothing emphasized with it. I think the sport should reward aggressiveness because at the end of the day, it is fighting. Um, and if one guy is being aggressive over the other, instead of asking, yeah, but is it is it effective? How about, well, if it's if it's a crapshoot and it's even, right, then I'm going to give it to the aggressive guy. I'm not going to just ask, but it wasn't effective, though, so therefore I'm not going to give it to him. That's just how I feel about it. And also I think defense is redundant. You already have clean punching as a criteria. So obviously, if I'm boxing Joe Calix, okay, and Calix is landing more punches than me, right? He's landing 100 around. I'm landing nothing. 
Obviously, his defense is better than mine because I'm not landing anything on him. He's landing more on me, right? So it's it's just a redundant scoring criteria, in my opinion. But I'll just leave it at that. And I and I think it leaves too much room for artistry scoring. Like, oh, I like the way he deflects the punches and and uh, the manner in which he avoids the engagement. But it's not really touching on the effectiveness of it. Because all I got to do is look at the punch stats, and I see people will give credit to the guy for defense because of his the movements he's defensive movements he's doing in the ring. Not necessarily that he's getting hit less. What's at the end of the day? That's what defense is. Okay, like that's just how I see it. All right, but this is my opinion. Uh, I thought Lemos won, but I'm not gonna cry for spill milk. I'm not gonna say it's robbery either. But there's always that one judge that fucks it up and, and it was just too wide for my liking and it is what it is. Okay. I think Joe uh, Beep told me that none of the judges gave Lemos round 12. Okay. Man. So the guy, like you couldn't, like the guy that only gave him three rounds, couldn't give him one more, like the 12th round? Like this is crazy. Yeah. But we're going to proceed here. Big news. It's the news of the week. Boots. Ennis signs with Matchroom. What do you think of the move? And what fights do you potentially see here, Calix? I love it. Um, now, we, we, we won't know if it's a good move until it's executed and we'll find out, right? But um, a lot of people were criticizing. I remember last year, Pro Gray signing with Matchroom over top rank. And we saw that that ended up working for Pro Gray. Why? Because... What people didn't know is Eddie Hearn promised him three fights within 15 months. So he's promising him activity. On top of that, he's promising him a homecoming fight uh, straight out the gate pretty quick. He got that done within six weeks. And then he's promising him a big fight in the second fight. I wouldn't be surprised if he's offering Boots and it's a similar type of structure of a deal here to where you promised this many. That's what we know about the lawsuit, right? Is they're promising me the dates, but they're not delivering the dates. So Boots, I think Eddie Hearn sweeps in and he's saying, I'll give you the dates. I'll give you the fights. We're, we're going to get you active. And that's what Boots and his knees right now is more than the opponent. He needs activity right now, and they need to build him in a way that makes sense, which they haven't been doing throughout his eight-year career right now. He's fighting on undercards, um, hasn't fought in Pennsylvania in, I think, six, seven years, which doesn't make sense. He's a Philadelphia fighter. So last, the last fight, at least they got him to AC. At least they got him on a main event. But for a guy this talented and marketable, from all accounts, nice guy. Super talented, pound for pound level talent from, eye, from what the eye test tells us, right? There's no need for them to be moving his career the way they've been moving it uh, up to this point, right? So maybe they'll give him structure now, activity, and we'll see what route they take. Now, Cody Crowley out the gate would be good. Let's see who wins the first bid for that. Cody Crowley in Philadelphia would be beautiful to start this off. And then we're hearing Eddie Hearn say, look, the, the target, the ultimate target is Bud Crawford. We'll see if he can deliver that. Um, we know he has access to some Saudi money, so we'll see. Uh, but this gives us structure and it's going to give us activity. People need to see this guy fight. This is the type of guy that a generation, two generations ago would have been a household name in America, but he's not because they're not carrying his career the right way. So that's, that's frustrating to see. But I think we're going to get some um, structure on his team right now and we'll get things going in the right direction. But one thing I, I am, just to wrap it up, interested to see is will he go the Golovkin route or will he go the Paul Williams route? Because he is ducked. We, we do know that. He is a guy that is avoided. Now, he hasn't done, his, done himself any favors at 147 by taking different routes and staying exclusive to Showtime when, according to his dad, he doesn't have a contract with Showtime. But... That being said, we do know he's not. He's avoid. He's an avoided fighter. So will he take the route of Golovkin and just fight quarterly, almost on a quarterly basis, and stay at 147 until guys naturally move up from 140 to 147, and he corners all the belts, or will he go the Golovkin route or, or the, the Paul Williams route and say, "Look, the guys are avoiding me at 147. I want the fights now. I'll go up and chase Buck Crawford up to 154. I'll go up and 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 uh, chase Virgil Ortiz." Um, I'll naturally go up to maybe uh, middleweight down the road. So we'll see. 
we'll see what what route he takes but you can't just sit there and wallow in your sorrow and say people are avoiding me you got to go out and make things happen all right gail what you make when you heard the news what do you think of the move and what do you anticipate is next Boots has been in a mess with his former promoter now boxing. His dad was representing him, negotiating, getting out of that deal. You know, he really should have gotten somebody else to represent him, frankly. But uh, they finally managed to get that lawsuit settled. It wasted a hell of a lot of time for a young, talented guy like Boots Ennis. But finally, he becomes a free agent. He signs with signs with Matchroom, which is a very smart idea. Um, and the Crowley fight, you know, that was originally ordered back in January. And no terms reached. Then we have the purse bid. Then there's a delay. And, you know, on and on we go. Finally, it seems like all the strings are cut. Everybody's unencumbered. The Crowley fight makes a lot of sense. Crowley's got that undefeated record. It's an appropriate level, especially as inactive as Ennis has been, um, to get back in against somebody like Crowley. And I anticipate that will be a fun fight to watch. You know, no no huggy, kissy stuff going on in that fight. Um, let's hope not. And, you know, both have something to prove at that level at this time. So it's a great matchup. Where it goes from there... Yeah, Boots may have to chase his opposition. And, and I do think it'll be the glove can route. I really do. Um, so we'll see what happens. But let's just get the man back in the ring, see where he stands, see if he's got rust to knock off, see how he is against an aggressive guy with a lot to prove who will let it all go. And that'll tell us a lot about what his future path will be. Okay. All right. So, Beeb, what do you think of the move? Um, and, um, what, like, what type of matches do, do you see happen here? Do you think he'll be more active now? Oh, oh, 100% he'll be more active. And I think Eddie Hearn and the zone, because of the model over there where, the, you know, there, there are other fights besides pay-per-view fights over under zone, whereas where he was fighting out of, the majority of the fights were on pay-per-view and because of that, he wasn't getting dates. So this is a better environment from over there. And another thing that w that's great about Eddie is his willingness and his ability to work with other promoters. He does it very well, right? Um, and Oscar's over there too. And now he's got that that relationship with Frank. And they obviously has the relationship with the Saudis. And another thing too, right, is people keep saying that that Boots has no leverage. Boots is this. Boots is that. He's in a bad spot. Who wants to fight him? But when Crawford moves up, the division's wide open, and those titles become vacated. Who else is gonna be the man there? Who's gonna be the name? You know, Conor Ben. You can argue is a big name in in the UK, but that's even if he can ever fight in the UK again, right? So, I think the division is gonna be wide open when Bud moves up. And Boots can be the guy, right? He can be the guy, and he, he could be the next guy to, to, to become undisputed at 147, and then all roads will lead to him. So I think this was a great move, and I I, I don't have any problem with it. I, I'm ha actually happy for Boots. He's finally going to be able to be active and, and be on a schedule for once. Okay. Ezra, same question to you, brother. I think it's. I mean, I think it's a good move as far as he's gonna get in the ring. That, that's good. I, I'm glad on that. Now, is this gonna build his name? It hasn't really worked out for anyone else. I mean, let's be honest. The, the, the match from USA has not really built anyone's name to be like, hey, this guy's a household name now, or he's a star now. That, that, no, that's not haven't been the case. Now, I think Matchroom is 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 being aggressive. I, I like that. People keep telling Matchroom USA is done. They're wrapping it up, but they're no, they're not. They're still aggressive. They're still thinking that if they get the right talent and a star can change fate for anyone. If boxing, the whole sport could turn on its head with just the right star. It, it, it's a star sport. So they're hoping they have the talent here that builds into a star power. But it could just be the uh, Demetrius Andrade route where he's just, okay, he's got, he's got fights. We don't give a damn about the fights. They're not against guys that we really care about. But, yeah, he's fighting. He's active. We're out of this deal. He made more money, but he's not no bigger of a name. It, it could be that situation. So I don't know what this plays out. He'll be more active. That's good. 
Crowley fight was pretty much what I expected if he was still with the PVC anyways. If he stood on that side, I expect Crowley fight. So it's not like, oh, wow, they got a Crowley fight. Man. That's, that's an all right fight. That's a good fight. It's not n- n- nothing that's uh, too creative to me. I'm curious where they go. 147 never really have nothing. I mean, you can do Connor, uh, Ben. I mean, <laughs> Ben, okay, we get a little bit, a little name power there, but no one truly b- believes Ben could do anything in that fight. It's not going to be in the UK. Are we going to do that fight in Florida? Um, and then you got from there, there's really no one else in that weight class. Then the, what the hope is, is the zone could get everybody, all the promoters under one banner working together, right? Then you can move 154. You have fights like Virgil. You got Crowley. You got guys like that. Then it gets a little bit more interesting. But right now, we're just where it's at, he could really just get stuck fighting guys the next three fights that we really have no, not that much interest in. Okay. Uh, well, uh, just to follow up, Rod, do, do you think this is better than if he would have stayed with PBC? I, I mean, it's like to me, it's like the battle of two evils, right? Like you're not, uh, you're not active, but you might. There had some more names that were more interesting. You have Sandy Onis, right? You have Barrios. To me, those are more household names, right? I think that, that, that if there's one promotion right now in the U.S. that has guys that can build star power, the only one to me is proven is PBC with it. I know is that saying they're the best promotion? No, or is that saying they're the best at doing this? No, but they are the best as far as building name value. I, I truly believe that. Gotcha. But activity-wise, no, he probably made the best decision. If he just says, I, look, I, I'm not, I don't want to do this system. I want to be active. I truly believe that I'm going to be a star no matter where I go. I just need to get in the ring. And yeah, that makes this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense. Gotcha. Dave, what you think of the signing with Matchroom? And uh, like, what, what, what do you envision here for Boots? Like, let's say in the next year or so. Man, I'm so happy for the guy. Finally, he's that all these roadblocks. Hopefully, most of these roadblocks will be out the way. I feel like he was punished because he wasn't, he didn't have Alice as advisor. And so obviously he was with Showtime, but he wasn't getting the fights. He wasn't getting promoted the way he should have. Someone of his of his talent level, right? And now I can see all these open possibilities over there working with Matchroom. First of all, I would love to see him fight Connor Ben. Connor Ben has now had, I think, two fights here in Las Vegas. People are interested in Connor Ben a little bit. But obviously, two years ago, we were talking about the welterweight division and the three top prospect contenders we had in mind were Virgil Ortiz, Connor Ben, and Boots Ennis, all knockout artists. And they're all over at the zone. They've all got promotional deals with the zone. I can envision a great fight with Connor Ben being very marketable here on the West Coast in Las Vegas. I can also see now a possibility of him fighting Giovanni Santillan out of uh, Gail San Diego because we've seen evidence of Matchroom, like you guys pointed out, that Eddie can work with top rank. And Giovanni Santillan is a contender. He just destroyed Oscar's Rocha. Wouldn't mind seeing him against Rocha, too, and see how he does against Rocha, someone that's already been destroyed by Santillan. And, of course, obviously, the, the elephant in the room is if Booth Dennis wants to be a star, and isn't getting the opportunities to unify or become undisputed at 147 because Bud is going to hold those belts hostage, then why not move up to 154 and demand a fight with somebody like Virgil Ortiz? Two very young stars at the peak of their game. Maybe there's no titles on the line. Maybe it doesn't make business sense, but it's a fight that fight fans are going to want to see. And now it's possible. I'm excited for Boots Ennis, big time. I will say the, the Conor Ben fight could be a big fight in the U.K., but will they let Connor Ben find him? I haven't even kept up with that whole thing. Is he anywhere near getting approved to fight over there? He basically. What is it? What is that? Oh, I don't know. All right. Well, Connor uh, Ben. Connor Ben lost. Uh, lost the. Uh, what's his name? Um, UCAD and uh, the British Boxing Board of Control won the appeal, so he's not. Oh, wow. Yeah, they won the appeal. Yeah. Where, where have I been? What's, what's going on? So that fight happening? would have to take place in, in the States here. Yep. Excuse for me, the time being, this, when, when did for, that happen? Uh, that a couple about, weeks ago, right? about two weeks ago, yeah. About okay. Two weeks ago, sure. He's a he's a he's an American fighter for the time being. Yeah. Connor Ben, our guy Connor Ben. But yeah. um I, I just wanted to piggyback real quick on Dave's point. Dave brings up a great point is the 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 predicament Boots was in was he's not a PBC fighter. And but he was he he was sort of like a PBC independent contractor in that they were loyal to Showtime, so they had to sort of fight on PBC undercards. They had to have access to PBC fighters. But Al wasn't gonna do the best, obviously, for Boots when Boots isn't one of his fighters. So it it hasn't been the best run career, and it can only go up from here. <laughs> so 
Uh, but I'm just, I, I, I just want to see the guy fight because this is one. Everybody says it. This is one of the best talents. Like I test, it flies. It, it, it fly, and he's a Philly fighter, and he fights like a Philly fighter. So he's entertaining too. Yeah, I remember. Um, it was, I believe it was last year or the year before. Uh, and I actually did a show with Calix and we're talking about boots and what these, first of all, he needs to be active, but like, and he's not the only one, but they're not in a lot of cases, they're not developing these fighters in their area. So he's from Philadelphia. Yeah. It's a fight. Like town. historical boxing town. Like yeah. you would think they would push that and, but it's not a thing they're doing. So maybe, I don't know if it's too late or not, like maybe match music could start, you know, building them up first in philadelphia and go from there but i mean he's he's you know he's been around for a while now so it is what it is so let's go ahead and um proceed here um a quick cap or no cap i i, I just want you guys opinion on this i'll start with gail gail will fury pull out of the usyk fight like if is do you think that's going to happen no. Okay. Ezra, do you think it happens, the fight? Yeah, I think the fight's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I thought the last one, you know, even though I was getting frustrated with Fury and all that, you know, it was just a head button sparring. I mean, you saw the video. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's – The elbow, yeah. I think yeah. he got in shape. You know what I mean? He looks in shape. I don't think he gets – he's not the kind of guy that gets in shape for no reason. You know what I mean? He'd rather, he'd rather be out of shape. I really believe that. Beeb, cap or no cap, Tyson Fury will pull out of the fight. Cap, he, he he's not going to pull out of the fight. Galax? Cap. Cap. Yeah. Right. Cap. Dave. Cap. The fight goes on. Cap. All right. Okay. Let's go. Tur Turkey ain't letting rumors. That Not on Turkey's watch. Not, not on Turkey Alice's watch. Yeah, Turkey's watch. like, hell no. That's right. You don't piss off His Excellency. <laughs> Ryan Garcia will pull out of the Devin Haney fight. Cap or no cap, Gail? Nah, he can't pull out. Well, he doesn't well, he, have a really he's proven that already. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, Ezra, <laughs> no, that, that Ryan show up for that fight. I'm the only one that's that's that can get away from saying that. Golden Boy will th throw him in the ring if they have to. I mean, they'll put him in a street jacket, throw him in that ring if they need to. So, that fight is happening. People are getting paid. <laughs> can you imagine the lawyer and Hopkins just dragging him to the ring, is kicking and screaming? This <laughs> is crazy. Uh, Chobib, Ryan Garcia pulls out of the Haney fight, cap or no cap? That is gigantic cap. There's too much money on the line there. Okay. Calix? Gigantic agree? cap. I agree with B. Gigantic cap. A lot of money. A lot of money on the table. For for both those fights you're talking about. Too much money on the table. Dave? Cap. He's six pounds within uh, his weight. Yeah. I'm like a visor. Like, like it's the caps on, but it's kind of like not like I just. Don't do it. I, I'm just. Don't be, a, of, don't, be, don't be a contrarian, please. A visor? Like, I, I'm just thinking like, what if you just bust out with like, I'm depressed. I have a mental illness. I got to pull out. <laughs> he'll be depressed while he's in the ring. He'll be depressed while he's in the ring. <laughs> what was that, Gil? Too damn bad. Them bad, Devin's but I agree. I think too. both fights happen. There's just a lot of rumors people saying, like, I remember when Tyson Fury announced all he did was announce that he's gonna have a press conference, and <laughs> there were some podcasters out here, like, oh, watch, he, he's gonna announce that, that he's pulling out of the fight. Like, why would he do a press conference to pull out of the to make an announcement that he's pulling out of the fight? I don't get it, but and a lot of people are still feeling like Ryan's gonna pull out. Uh, but I just don't, I just, at this point, it's just too close. I, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, shout out to the chat, by the way. Make sure you hit the like button. Um, we got about 270 people watching on X. If you could always come to channel D style boxing and, um, join us here in the chat here on YouTube. We've got about 60 people watching on YouTube. Make sure you hit the like button guys. It's much appreciated. It helps with the algorithm and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and um, proceed here. Canelo versus Munguia. The undercard. It's, mm -hmm. it's official. We got some pretty good matchups here. All quote-unquote title fights. Um, or interims, whatever you want to call it. Mario Barrios versus Fabian TNT. 
Maidana, Brandon Figueroa against Jesse Magdaleno, and Stan Jones versus Maestre. That's the undercard for Canelo versus Mongia. Ezra, what are your thoughts on his undercard? Oh, that, I think that undercard sucks, I'll be honest with you. That, that's a bad undercard. Uh, the one thing that interests me, though, about it, I, I'll tell you, I, I must be a sucker, but my history versus Danny Onis, something about that fight where I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be watching early. I, that's the opening bout. I will be there early. But, yeah, the rest of the card, there's no, uh, there's lack of creativity in there. And, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, all the money wants the main event, it feels like. So that, that is what it is. Okay. Calix, what are your thoughts on his undercard, brother? Hate it. Hate it. And oh, by the way, I was just looking up the odds. Uh, Devin Haney now a 10 to 1 favorite over Ryan Garcia, just unreal. But um, yeah, I, I don't like it at all. I don't, I think somebody was saying, um, and I need to fact check it, but more than half the guys on this undercard, I believe, are more than a year laid off. Just huge inactivity on this card. And the, the mm. frustrating thing about this is there are a lot of guys on that roster who we need to get active. And they didn't end up on this card. Just it, it just leaves a lot to be desired. And this is this is the type of card that you just kind of, you know, wow. you're doing other you're, you're doing other things while it's on. If something happens, then you can turn your eye to it. But I, I'm not I'm not interested in this card in this uh, undercard at all. Before we continue, I, I'm very sur- I, This is an undercard. I actually don't think this is a bad undercard. Uh, I think these are good fights. But mm. okay. Dave, what are your thoughts? You know, it's interesting. Is it I, just that few weeks ago when I ran into Mario uh, and uh, Brian Mendoza at the Cosmopolitan, I kind of wished it into fruition that he'd get a Cinco de Mayo fight, and here he is on the card announced. It's your fault. And uh, <laughs> Jesus Ramos uh, does not get rewarded after his performance on the Canelo undercard. That, to me, was very interesting, uh, a very close fight that I thought he should have won. He does not get rewarded on this card. The most interesting thing about... Uh, Mario Barrios and Figueroa is that they're brother-in-laws now as he's going to have a baby with his sister. And that's about the most interesting thing in the undercard to me. Aside from the fact that Maestre and Stanionis, who's someone I really want to see back in the ring, is that they are uh, have been high-level amateur and they've fought each other in the amateurs. And I'd like to see that rematch. But other than that, it's just kind of filler to me. Yep. For sure, for sure. Remy, well, I'll touch on their super chat when we get to that topic. But Joe Beeb. What do you think of the undercard, brother? That's not a fabulous undercard. You remember USA Tuesday Night Fights with Sean O'Grady and Al Albert? Yep. It's, it's maybe a slight step above those fights. Do you think? I don't I don't think it's a slight step above. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be up trying to be optimistic here, please. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just think like like B. Well, let me let me just start. Do you, are you saying they're predictable? They're not going to be exciting. They're, they're not high status. High, high. I I think what? that they're going to be um, predictable fights. Correct. You're you're, you're you're spot on with your assessment. Yep. And not meaningful either. Like, what, yeah, they're they're, not, just, they're not take us anywhere. They're, they're not significant. Like no mm-hmm. one's saying these fights have to happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, like, okay, all right. Gail. Well, what about you? Well, what do you think of this undercard? The undercard is purely a business decision because a lot of money has gone into that main event. How do you add value, given what it would cost, to bump up the pay per views enough, just based on that undercard when? Canelo and Munguia are going to draw everything they're going to get. The undercard doesn't add one way or the other. I am happy to see Stanionis back in the ring. I, I completely agree. The guy has just gotten screwed and worked over you know, repeatedly. I feel terrible for the guy. And today's media call with uh, all the undercard fighters, Stanionis was just r- raring to go. And you could just tell it's just been killing him. And he made a very big point of saying, I live the lifestyle. I'm in the gym. I've never gotten out of shape. I'm ready. And I believe him. I absolutely believe him. And I've seen him a couple of times since this happened. And it is he, he is gonna he is gonna take it out <laughs> on his opponent, I have a feeling, and make a point. 
and and good for him. The others, eh, you know, the truth is everyone thought the zoo undercard was a stinker, more or less, with the exception of the of the Cruz and Romero fight, although there were some questions about what was going to happen. And you know what? It turned out to be kick-ass every single fight. I mean, even Laura had the grace to get his fight over early with a nice knockout. We all had to hustle back from refreshing our drinks. So, eh, it, it's, it's, it's surely a matter of, of business. And I'm going to hold out hope that Stanionis gives a good performance, gets back in the mix, and the rest of them, you know, hey, we all need drink and bathroom breaks. So there it is. Like I, oh, okay. Um, I'll say this. This is what I'll say. Is it the greatest undercard of all time? No, right? But this is not that bad, in my opinion. Um here we Stanio go. Maestre, Maestre is a, a power puncher and he's dangerous. Okay. And while I'm not favoring him to win, obviously I think Stanio is more likely he wins that fight. It's still a dangerous fight. Like, I don't think that's a foregone. We don't even, we don't even know who these guys are anymore. You don't know Maestro. Gabriel Maestro, you don't know who no, he is. No, but I'm saying these guys rarely ever fight. So like Stanionis, take him for example. Okay. We haven't seen him in over two years, so we don't even know who he is anymore at this point. I mean, well, they, they got to start at some point. Well, like, like at some point, they got to get a fight, right? Like, what are we going to keep him shelf forever? I, I agree, but this is the problem with the chronic inactivity is when these guys do fight and they come back and they need what? They need soft touches to come back. And then you expect us to get excited about think, that. I don't think Maestra is a tune-up, is what I'm saying. And I'll say this as well. This is step-aside money going wrong, too. So Stan Jonas can complain and whine, but several times he's taken step-aside <laughs> money. Bigger fight, so just saying. First of all, no one's going to confuse me for PBC's PR, okay? That's, that's number one. Um, but But, <laughs> but, but. I just think it's a good fight. Like that's not for an undercard is all I'm saying. And I'm not saying like put it on a, as a headliner, which is not. And I think Brandon Figueroa versus Jesse Magdaleno is going to be a very fun fight to watch. And this is Jesse, not Diego. Jesse, you know what I mean? That's an inside joke. Uh, but but like I just I don't think that's a bad fight. Why? Because because Jesse lost to Hitchens. I mean, okay, but but I think it's a good fight. I, I just think that's going to probably be the fight of the night. It's possible, right? And Mario Barrios against uh, Fabian Maidana. Okay, fine. It's not Marcos Maidana. But, you know, it, it's still a tough Argentinian. You guys can have it both ways, right? I've seen the chat earlier, right? It was like, <laughs> Mario Barrios, who's him? But then, like, they put him in the, in the ring with a guy like this, and then all of a sudden, Mario Barrios is just too good to be in the ring with uh, with Baby and Maidana. I, I'm just not sold Dude. that Mario Barrios is that dude like that to, like, where I'm going to scoff at this fight. I think it's a good fight. Yeah, Mario Barrios could lose to anyone. I mean, that's the honest truth. So, I you know what? That. D style uh, Gail brought up this great point. We all kind of ragged on the card of Tim Zhu, uh, the undercard. But then that... Or, uh, what's his name had to pull out and all of a sudden the card had magic to it right in my eyes the person to get hurt is my donna he pulls out of the fight and stanionis gets elevated to the co-main against a very active mario barrios who is kind of now peaking as a welterweight stanionis a guy who we know should have more talent than, than mario barrios but he's been inactive. And now all of a sudden this card gets electrifying. Now we have a co-main that really looks good. Mario Barrios, I, I think, agree. has an interim title. And now I really care about this card. But, you know, so <laughs> what I'm happened? Saying, like, why, why not? <laughs> so but, but what you're saying you know, is uh, Maestri against Maidana should have been on the undercard. And then yes, Barrios yes, against yes. I mean, My own co-host, Drew Evo, said, well, if this, why didn't you guys uh, play out that Tim Zhu card the way it was? originally right and i'm saying the same thing here if there's one guy to get ill it should be my donna and all of a sudden stan Jonas is fighting mario barrios now that's an interesting fight and like you guys said now we got to find somebody else to fill out the bottom and they I, always I, have what? somebody stand by i don't think anybody in this panel would be like i think everybody would have been saying oh stan Jonas would destroy mario barrios like, like I, I just think that's that's that would have been the reaction 
to be honest with you. I don't know, man. I, I stood next to Mario Barrios. Pick. I stood next to Mario Barrios. I'm, I told, I, I cannot describe. The guy has got some seriously wide shoulders. This guy's frame is really, really big for a welterweight. I mean, he actually dwarfs Brian Mendoza. Yeah, what's, what's what? I think Barrios he, is solid, bro. I think Barrios he actually dwarfs Brian he, Mendoza. Who on this panel will pick him against Sandy Arnold's? Could be based on activity. Yeah, I, I don't know. It'd be I a would, toss. -up. I would I would bet him if he if I if he was on if he got if I was if he was like two to one. I would bet him. I think it's yeah. I think it's like a 50, 50, 50. I think Staniolis would run him out the ring. I mean, of course, no, I, I don't. Staniolis yeah. hasn't hasn't been in there for a while. He's. he's it makes know. it more interesting. But again, I'm just wishing. <laughs> I think Barrios Mario. can box. Him. I think I think. I think Stenionis would have to get close. I think Barrios is pretty good at boxing from the outside. I, I think it'd be a, I think it'd be an interesting fight. To be honest, I will agree that that would have been the the fight to make, and and I do agree like that they could have like PBC could have done Fondora against Mendoza rematch, right? Like on the undercard of the zoo fight, they didn't. Um, it, I I don't know. Like I, I get it. I really do. But but. I'm not saying it's the – look, I ne never did I say this is the best possible undercard they could have made. What I'm saying is this. From a scale of 1 to 10, I would give this undercard like a 6.5. I don't think it's that bad because what I want for my undercards is good fights. I'm I, I'm tuning in for the main event. That I'm buying the main event. I'm not buying the undercard. The undercard is the appetizer before the main course. And what do I want? So I got to grade it from the perspective of an undercard. As long as they're good fights, how many times have we seen meaningful fights or big fights in undercard? They don't deliver, right? I want fights that are going to deliver and be fun, right? On the lead up to the main event is what I want, right? And I honestly do believe these are going to be good fights. You know, I know Joe B thinks that they're wiring me money, and like, like I'm just saying, I think they're going to be good fights. That's all I'm saying. Listen, there's a Ferrari parked in your driveway as we speak. I know what all I. Right. Uh, I'm not talking to Turkey out of Sheik, you know what I mean? Um, but the escort's not there anymore. The Ferraris are the space. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Man, that's crazy. All right, guys. Jared Anderson is a big favorite. I hope I'm not butchering his name. A Riot Murphy. Is, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Is that right? I, I, I'm not even going to attempt to try to pronounce it. But like I don't know, like I don't, I wasn't sure of the why is silent or what. Like it is what it is. Um, and and shout out to to Remy for the super chat. It says Anderson versus Ryan Murray, uh, stoppage or no on Saturday. Um, I think Anderson will probably more likely get the stoppage. Um, let's go. Let's let's. I don't want to spend too much time with the fight itself, but I just want to go around the panel really quick because. Um, Jared Anderson is a huge favorite, and and just so we don't act like only PPC does it. Here, here we have a car with two fights, with two pretty good heavyweights, and they're on two different fights, mm -hmm. right? The top rank is doing it right here, right? So, Calix, do you think this fight ends by stoppage or decision or or predict a round or something? What do you got? Yeah, I would I would agree with um, or I would I would answer Remy's question. Yes, um, he's a big big favorite to knock him out minus 320 by knockout nine to one favor coming into this fight and the reason that is is huge discrepancy in height um, and a reach advantage as well coming into this fight so i think mary is going to be there to get hit and he's going to get hit i think the question we're all asking is is jared head anderson's head there like it's it's he's just all over the place when the guy's talking about retiring at 26 years old and saying i'm only in this for the money and once i get the money i'm out stuff like that it's just putting off the mental health issue vibes once again that we saw with a lot of these guys and it's the same thing here and i just wonder if his head's going to be there and we may see be able to see that if it's there or not in this fight um but I don't think this is the opponent that's gonna take advantage of that, if you will. Mm. The fight might go longer because of that, but I don't think he's the one that's gonna cash in on Jared Anderson not being there mentally. I think that's coming down the road, and I think that is coming. I think a guy is gonna knock Jared Anderson out, and it's it's gonna be, uh, it, it's gonna go downhill for him at some point. I just don't see gotcha. his mental health there. So, but I like a stoppage here. I think it's an yeah. easy play. 
By the way, uh, Ruben Villa, one of my favorite boxers, actually, is going to be on that card. I'll, I hope he gets a rematch with Vinal Lopez, who he already beat. Uh, but I, I, I still believe Ruben Villa is the future world champion. And if it, Jabba will also be fighting in that. Now, why isn't Jeff? Might as well give us Anderson versus a Jabba, right? But, but for whatever reason, yeah. they make us wait for everything. Uh, Dave. Oh, stop, stop stoppage stop. win. And thank okay. you for bringing up uh, the attention, yeah, to Ruben Villa. He's uh, trying to contend for another uh, featherweight title opportunity. But I want to see Jared Anderson against Jalalov or even Ricardo Torres, you know, Richard Torres. That's I want to see him against, like, top rank. Do, do us a favor and let's see him matched up against... Torres is uh, still knocking out Walmart greeters, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, the security guards, okay? Like, like it is what it is. But so <laughs> The guy's trying to make a living, man. Hey, hey, talk to us. Is this going to end by brutal stoppage, or do you see a potential decision? How do you see it? Uh, I think it'll be a probably a later round stoppage. I, okay. I think I think we get him out of there. All right. Ezra, are you excited for this fight? And how do you see it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not excited for this fight. I'll be honest with you. And uh, I'll be honest, I don't know if it's gonna end a stoppage. I, I, I'll be honest. It better, it better end a stoppage. And the right. funny thing is, to say like Jared Anderson says, I'm here for the money. We'll start being here for the money then. Give me some guys that will make some money because I keep getting guys. It's like to me, I'm like, oh no, it seems like you're here to try to build your record and be, and and stay as long as uh, possible because there's no way there's a lot of money in this. So yeah, be here for the money. Give me an actual guy in front of him that I care about. I do not care about this fight. I don't get why they keep cooking this Ajagba fight that no one wants this fight to cook. We don't need this to cook. This could happen. And it They're would marinating be the it, right? Yeah, it would be the same ratings that we're going to get this weekend, I'll be honest with you. But I'd be more interested in it. I'll give you that. I'll give you, I would take more time to watch that one and be interested in that one and maybe do even a little film study. I might even get a little creative with that one. But yeah. the right now, what we're getting, I do not, I don't care. I don't care. He better get a knockout because if he does it, then we can fully uh, start selling all our stock. We can completely bail out on that. But if yeah, he better get a stoppage. Uh, Gail, I remember um, driving down I-10 here in El Paso years ago, by the way. Um, I'm not as young as I look, uh, but I, I was r driving and I remember seeing like a big billboard when they still had billboards, right, for fights. And it was Hopkins Deloya right next to each other, and it said Collision Course. I thought it was their fight, but it was actually they were on the same card, and he was in a fight. Stern Deloya was, and 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 Hopkins had a, another fight. I can't remember the name of the guy, but um, either way, this is the Collision Course for FA Java versus Jared Anderson. We're on the road there, but why aren't we getting like in your opinion? Why are we, why aren't they just giving us FA Java versus Jared Anderson and 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 how do you think this fight plays out with Jared Anderson? So the reason we're not seeing it is because top rank has got to wring its value out of those two guys before they knock one of them off. And let me tell you, I think F.A. Ajagba is damned entertaining. His fight with uh, Kaladze was one of the wildest fights I've ever seen. And for sure, the wildest fight I've ever seen ringside. It was nuts. Except maybe for the blood fest here a couple weekends ago. But... Come on, Mary. Mary is the number one heavyweight in Belgium. I mean, number one out of eight. <laughs> His first fight in the United States, he's a blown up cruiserweight. However, having said all that, his only stoppage loss was one of those TKO attrition types. Um, and it was to Arlen Goulamarian, interestingly enough, who... Uh, Gilberto Ramirez just thrashed. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a spectacular knockout. And I, I am with all of you who are concerned, more than a little concerned about Jared Anderson, his drive and his focus. I mean, it is shocking to hear a guy 25 saying, yeah, I'm planning on retiring when I'm 27. I mean, I'll give it to Bob Arum at his age. His heart must be stronger than I think because if he didn't fall over dead when he heard that, nothing will kill him. That that was an, I mean, that was just an awful statement. And the fact that that went on the air in a taped, edited interview with Tessator, I, I still can't quite wrap my head around how that happened. So I, I just, you know, we know how much drive, heart, desire, determination can make a fighter great. 
And the opposite is true. We have seen a lot of guys over the years with massive talent, natural athletic skills who get by, who skate by essentially because they were blessed with that, but they don't develop it and they don't do enough to take themselves to the next level. And I fear Anderson is one of those guys. So I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I do think he'll win. I think he'll just kind of win. And I, I think eventually a referee will step in to stop Mary from, you know, taking too much punishment, maybe a little earlier than necessary. And there it is. But in the co-main, I want crazy. I want crazy. I want knockdowns. I want wildness. And I'll be perfectly good with that. Me too. Hey, so look, um, quick facts, D style over under for this fight, six and a half rounds, close to even odds. So that's that's interesting. Six and a half rounds, over under, close to even odds. Also, I, I wonder what the I, I wonder how many segments Mark Kriegel is going to do on Jared Anderson's dog Azul. Good lord, can they please get some pacing on that? I, I still don't weekend? know. Like like when he was crying to Roy Jones because he's feeling the pressure and like like well, what pressure? Like you're not even like. Top ten yet? Like what, what? What do you mean? Like, I don't. The whole thing's weird to me. Like the pressure of fighting it guys is. like this. I don't know. But um. And by the way, that card you were talking about, Robert Allen, Bernard Hopkins fought Robert rematch Allen, with right. Robert Allen. Rematch with Robert yeah, yeah. Allen. That's right. Yeah. Uh, collision course, which which almost got derailed, and they have to basically yeah. rob Sherman, in my opinion, to make that fight. Um, stop marinating these fights. Okay, like it doesn't make sense. But um, let, let's just uh. Finish this off with this. So, boxing scene reported. Jared Anderson, you know, he's interested in a Wilder fight. Um, what do you think of this match? Maybe later this year, maybe 2025. Is it the right time to do it? I'll give my quick answer. My quick answer is yes. It's time to do it. But I want to know you guys. Uh, I want you guys to elaborate. Gail, let's start with you. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I think if Wilder wants an exit fight, he can get a lot bigger fight than going down to a young gun like like Anderson. Um, I'd rather see him. I mean, I'd rather see him against Jile Zhang than in Anderson and, you know, uh, see how that, see how that all plays out. I just, I am really concerned about Anderson's upside. Uh, let's see how he does this week. I don't think we can look much, much farther ahead for him. Okay. All right. Ezra, what do you think about that potential matchup with Wilder and, Jared Anderson, does he even get that fight? I think Israel stepped away. We'll go, we'll come back to him. Uh, Joe Beeb, what do you think of that potential fight? I don't mind it from a fan's perspective, but really there's nothing in it for Wilder, I don't think. I mean, why would Wilder take it? He's probably, like Gail said, He's they've already talked about him taking on Zhang uh, in June, I believe. So we'll see. Okay. And I think Raw's back on. Can you hear us, Raw? Yeah, yeah, my bad, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I love that fight. Make that. That's that's what I'm talking about. If he's there for the money, that is perfect. You cannot get any better than that. That get me, me, him, and Wilder. I think I would favor Wilder big in that fight, honestly, just because Anderson's he's an aggressive style. He keeps coming forward, but he's not like the fastest with the speed or anything like that. Like he'll be there for. Low Cut off. Can you hear us? Ezra, are you there? You guys can hear me, right? Yep. I'm not sure what happened. Well, we'll come back to Ezra. Dave, I love Wilder this fight. Anderson, what do you think? <laughs> I love the fight on paper. I like that fight a lot, you know, but at this point in Deontay Wilder's career, it's a, it would tarnish his legacy. He's not a gatekeeper. He's not a stepping stone to a young guy who doesn't, uh, he's not even a champion. I don't see anything in it for Deontay Wilder. I'd rather see Deontay Wilder maybe go again with the Turkish route and get a, on one of those fight cards like, like the Zillow Zhang. I don't think it does anything for him to fight a young, hungry lion like Anderson. But I love the fight on paper because, you know, for Anderson, he's already got a win over a former champion in Charles Martin, even though Charles Martin only held the title once. It'd be a, a big deal for him to have a win over Deontay Wilder, but I think it'd be unlikely to see that fight. But okay. financially, it just does not make sense. Okay. 
What do you think of that? Like, if they were to make that fight, Calix, oh. what would your thoughts about that fight be? I love it. Uh, don't think it'll happen, but I love it. I actually think it's a safer fight than Zhang. And I, I this I think we had a discussion about this. I disagree with you. I, I think Zhang would knock Wilder out. I think you said you think Wilder would knock Zhang out. Um, I, I think Zhang is all wrong for Wilder, to be quite honest with you. And I think this is the safer fight. And I love the angle with it is two American heavyweights, and it's the American um best American heavyweight in Deontay Wilder, the latest um in the lineage of american heavyweight champions right the most recent against a guy who many considered up to this point is the best prospect since the 90s i hear people saying the best heavyweight prospect since riddick bow that's what i hear people saying so whether you buy into these narratives or not it's the latest the most recent american heavyweight champion at deontay wilder if i'm getting that correct against the best American heavyweight prospect in some time. I just like the angle there. I would love that fight. I don't know who I would favor, to be quite honest. Maybe I'd give the slight edge to Deontay Wilder. Well, I think um, Wilder is currently in a position where, of course, if he gets a lot of money over in Saudi again, which he likely will, mm -hmm. um, and fight Zhang or something. But but then you got to ask yourself, like Zhang is coming off a loss – what does that do for Wilder? Like, if it takes that big risk against Zhang, who many feel will beat him, well, what does that do for him, right? Other than, obviously, money speaks volumes. So, so if Turkey shows the money, it is what it is. But I don't know. I, I I could see Turkey looking at the angle you just spoke about. I could see him offering money for Wilder versus Anderson, looking at Anderson as a potential big name for future fights, and build upon the, the, the Wilder name. I, I could see that. Um, but I got to be honest, I actually think Wilder has a really good chance against Jared Anderson. Mm -hmm. I think he has a good shot in that fight. I really do. Um, I would favor Anderson. I think Anderson could do a lot of the same things like Parker did, and, and I think he has more power than Parker. So, so it, it's, it's he could still do a lot of similar things there, but – I don't know, man. Like, like I, I saw, like, like uh, people are bringing up the the Charles Martin fight. I thought he was going to just blow Charles Martin away, and he didn't, right? Like, I was like, "What's going on here?" Now, look, there's growing pains, there's development. I get that, but you're going to retire at age twenty seven, and you're not traveling in a Ferrari. You're traveling in a mule here, right? When are we like? What's what's the end goal here? Uh, I think a Wilder fight could do wonders for his career if he wins that fight, but probably won't happen. You know what I mean? It is what it is. There's just other options for Wilder, and I, I could see Wilder saying, look, I'm not going to be using the stepping stone for this dude over here. You know what I mean? Like, Give me some big fights, so it is what it is. With that said, I want to thank everyone who tuned in. Shout out to the panel. Um, this is the Stout Boxing. That is the show, guys. I appreciate everybody for coming on. We're out of here. Peace.